you look back over your career, are there any, uh, using the, the golfing uh, metaphor, any mulligans, any do-overs you wish you could do? Well, there's so many, uh, so many. I mean, ranging from the really uh, significant to the, what now seems to be pretty trivial, which gave rise to the New Yorker uh, profile. I mean, the, the, the really big um, uh, mistake we made that I truly regret is uh, the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. The press let the country down on that. Now, I'm not saying that we would have found it out if we'd really gone after it hard, but we didn't go after it hard enough. And I, I uh, feel particularly bad about that because at the time, Peter expressed to me more than once he had some skepticism. Not because he knew anything, I don't think he knew anything, but he just didn't trust governments generally and thought the Middle East was a very, he spent a lot of time there and thought there was a lot of indirection, misdirection, out and out lying going on there, and he was skeptical, and we did not go after that aggressively. But, but on what I think of now, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, Leonardo DiCaprio interviewing President Clinton, you know, which I got killed for at the time. Now it doesn't, it was an Earth Day special. Leonardo DiCaprio was the, was the honorary chair of Earth Day. And we decided to put on a primetime special on <coughs> the environment, and we thought if we get Leonardo DiCaprio, that would get more audience. And, uh, and then my team, without me knowing it, set up an interview with President Clinton and lied to me. Huh? And, and said, no, 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 there's not, it, it, not an interview. Oh, it's not an interview. He's just going to walk around, not sit down. And it turns out, and I defended the team publicly, and the White House came up with emails showing that, in fact, we've been asking for an interview all along, and I didn't know that. And I got killed. I, I, I went, it, it was the week of the White House correspondence to me, you know, which we just happened on mm -hmm. Saturday. Mm -hmm. And so we, back in those days, they used to bought a lot of tables, so we were right down in front. And um, uh, John Podesta handed out free Leo buttons to everybody in the room on the way. <laughs> and President Clinton, um, when it was tame time for him, instead of playing Ruffles and Flourishes, they played the theme song from the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> and he stood up and she you know, played and she says, touching, isn't it? For some reason, I can't get that song out of my mind. And then he proceeded to just lambaste me, you know, in front of a thousand people in black tie. Just, you know, David West Mitchell would understand it's not the crime, it's the cover-up. And Andy Lack at the time was head of NBC News, and he got a little bit of a uh, kerfuffle because he said that he was personally America's news leader. And Clinton ended by saying, Andy Lack, you may be America's news leader, but David Weston, you're the king of the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you're probably getting a smile. Oh, geez. And, well, unlike Donald Trump, I've I had a smile on face the whole time. I laughed. It's just fine. But I mean, so, you know, if I had that door again, I wouldn't have done it that way. Having said that, in, in the annals of crimes of journalism, it's far from the worst. I mean, today, Bono got an interview with President Bush, uh, President Obama, about Sub-Saharan Africa, who wouldn't be bad eyelash. But, but the business has changed that much. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you one last question, and we'll open up to questions here from, uh, from our friends. Uh, uh, what ethics is just journalism, and TV journalism is fraught with so many ethical issues. Uh, you have <coughs> deadlines, ratings, uh, profit pressures. Uh, do you run a story or not run a story? Of some of the things, do you run stories in your parent company, Disney? Do you, mm -hmm. do you squash a story? All those things. Uh, can you pick one ethical, of the thousands you must have thought of, one ethical journalist, journalistic media issue that still vexes you today? Oh, I don't, I don't know if I, I no, I'm not sure. Maybe I mean, a story I, you I killed it's... that you wish you had, or a story you wish you'd pursued that you didn't. Well, what was the best destruction is the one I, I definitely wish right, I right. pursued that I didn't. No, I mean, I, I got crosswise of my parent company once or twice, but and I probably would have done it differently, but, but not the way you think. When I first came in into ABC News, the first day I took over for knowledge, they called me and said, the investigative unit has a piece on pedophilia at Disney World. And it's based on a book that was coming up from Regnery Press, um, from some guy who's done research and he's got to, and, and, uh, and my, I had a head of standards always when I was there, and the head of standards who had been there for a long, long time said, I don't even know what to advise you. Because if you kill the story, then the newsroom will go nuts. It's your first day on the job. And if you don't, the company will go nuts. And I managed to get both the newsroom and the company furious with me at the same time. What I said was, I said to the company, I'm sorry, if it's a legitimate story, I cannot kill the story because it's important. And I said to the, the, the investigative unit, I don't think you got the story. Because what they had is they had like six or seven anecdotes over 10 years of Disney. I said, well, Okay, fine. 
Well, what happens in an average mid-sized American town in terms of the population? How many people went to Disney World? If you can't show me that there's some disproportionate number, then well, why is this a story? So I ended up killing the story with a company who was furious with me because I didn't kill it out of principle. I killed it because the story wasn't good. If I had that to do over again, I would have said on the first day, I want you to wrap up all your work and send it to Dateline. <laughs> so if they, if they want to do the story, let them do the story that's great so that the American people will know the story. Right. Your service then. But with investigating your own company just not, never works. It's just a dumb idea. Because you'll always be criticized for being too harsh or too lenient or both at the same time. So things like that, I wish I did. But you know, the journalism, it's hard in the application because there are deadlines. Yeah. You're up against it. You're trying to figure out what the truth is. But the basic ethics of journalism are pretty clear. I mean, you try to find out as much of the truth as you can about things that matter to people, and you tell them. And it's not much more complicated than that. Now, there are a lot in the doing of it, it gets, it gets harder. But it's pretty straightforward. It's just when you start getting all bollocks of it, well, what do the advertisers think, or what do they think, then you're, then you're in trouble. But you, you basically have to have a bond with the audience that you're telling them things because you believe it to be true. You might be wrong, but you believe it to be true. And it's something that you believe matters. Right. And as long as you do that, it, uh, the rest of it. Well, in some ways, it sounds a bit like how you uh, approach your faith to try to distill it down to its essence. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, interesting to see that. Questions? Anyone want to ask uh, David? Anything is fair game, and uh, as you know, the ground rules is he can also choose not to answer anything he doesn't want to. But what's on your mind, uh, Greg? 